One of the most requested guides has been on Ouroboros forms and interlinking, and today I am finally going to deliver. In combat, Ouroboros forms are really powerful forms you can assume at any point with any character, provided you're past, like, Chapter 2. They last for a limited amount of time, but while they are active, you could freely use arts to deal pretty significant damage, and will take no damage in return. It is one of your most powerful combat options and can sometimes be used to clutch out wins that might be difficult otherwise. In this video, I want to discuss Ouroboros forms, application in combat, best art and skill link setups, and showcase an interesting party build to take maximum advantage of them. As always, if you enjoyed these guides, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out a lot. My wrist is hurting a little bit from typing so many scripts recently, so most of this video will be unscripted, and I will do my best not to ramble. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the mechanics of Ouroboros forms first. The primary thing that is important to know is that the Ouroboros forms have their own entirely unique stats and set of skills. Nothing you have equipped will have any effect on the Ouroboros forms once they are active. That last part, once it is active, is important because there is one pretty interesting exception that helps before the activation we'll talk about a bit later. If you go into the settings menu, there is also an option listed under game that allows you to change the interlink control type. Player means you control the interlink of the character you are currently playing as, and the AI will handle their own interlinks whenever they feel like it. And party means you control everything at all times. The AI is not very intelligent with this feature, so I found myself preferring party even if it may be a few extra inputs and require more awareness when playing. While in combat, if you have the setting set to player, all you need to do is press right on the D-pad to immediately go into your Ouroboros form. If you have it set to party, a new menu will pop up featuring all six characters. By pressing the corresponding button, X, Y, and B for Kevis, and directional inputs on the D-pad for Agnes characters, you can activate a specific Ouroboros form. Like I said, you can activate these at any time, but that does not mean that you want to just activate at battle start to be invulnerable and try to defeat enemies. There is another important mechanic to Ouroboros forms called the interlink level. Essentially, the interlink level can be either 0, 1, 2, or 3, and the higher the interlink level is, the stronger the Ouroboros form will be while active. Each level increases your damage by a pretty significant amount, and also increases the amount of talent gauge you get when you use an art. As such, it's always beneficial to wait until level 3 if you can afford to, because you'll get the most benefit out of that. You can hopefully see a clear difference in damage between level 3 and level 0 here. Then the question becomes, how do you raise your interlink level in combat? Well, if you check the actually useful tips menu in this game, it'll tell you that interlink levels can be raised by using fusion arts. This is the only known way to raise this to my knowledge, so every time you use a fusion art, you can contribute to the raising of your interlink level, and eventually it'll reach level 3 after you use enough fusion arts. This gives even more importance to fusion arts in combat, and are going to be one of the main things that you want to take advantage of when fighting. While you are in an Ouroboros form, you will see a heat gauge near the character icons in the upper right of the screen. This will raise every time you use an art, it'll raise passively over time, and once it gets to the end of the bar, you will overheat and no longer be able to use your form for a little bit of time. The interlink level will also reset to zero, so you'll have to build up your interlink level again before reactivating. If you manually cancel the interlink before it overheats, you'll be able to reactivate it again at any time, but the interlink will also reset back to level zero, this feature in particular is why I don't really like having the AI control it, because the AI likes to activate at interlink level 2 if they can, and sometimes they'll activate at level 0 and level 1, just depending on if they are low on health and want to save themselves from dying. I honestly think it is better to have a healer revive a character than to waste your interlink levels. Healers being able to revive in this game is a really strong effect that can happen very, very quickly, and the interlink levels are actually really important in combat, and I think level 3s are just so strong that you really just need to build up to them as much as you can, so by being able to control when the AI actually transform is going to be really beneficial. You can also switch off of an Ouroboros form at any time that you are controlling and go back to a ground control character, or control a different Ouroboros form the same way you'd swap characters normally. Hopefully that is enough of a mechanical explanation, and anything else I can show off in combat I can just do a little bit later in the video. For now I want to go into the Ouroboros menu and look at the Soul Tree really quickly and talk about that. So the Soul Tree is simply a skill tree type thing where you can level up your abilities gradually on a tree, and you have to follow the set line starting at the very beginning. And once that you get the skill, you can go to any subsequent line that it links to, and so on and so forth. Now, eventually, you can easily get every skill on this with a bunch of soul points to spare. I have 748 right now with everything on the skill tree. But I've still gotten a few questions about what is going to be the best path to take when you're on your soul tree. And typically, as I have said before, the best thing to go for on pretty much everyone is the ability to unlock arts canceling. Arts canceling is just inherently very valuable because it allows you to lose, use a lot more arts while your Ouroboros form is active. But other things I really think are important to prioritize are the specific skills that Ouroboros forms have because learning a skill is going to just increase all of your abilities if it is a really powerful skill, 
And heat gauge control is really important to learn as well, because it'll slow up the buildup of your heat gauge in certain situations, so those are good things that you can rush as well to get more use out of your Ouroboros forms. For Noah's tree in particular, Satisfying Piercer is a really good skill, and so is Opportunity and Crisis, so those might be two things that you might want to get as soon as possible. One of the interesting customization abilities of Ouroboros forms is the ability to skill link to your partner. This is a pretty interesting feature because it allows you to take specific skills from your partner or specific stat boosts. You can only get two of these skill links, but that is still pretty valuable in a lot of situations because you can take some really powerful skills on some characters, and you can just get really nice boosts to attack or critical rate or anything else that you might want. The second slot for each character is locked behind doing their side story, so you may want to seek out their side stories and do those as soon as you possibly can, just to get the extra benefit for the Ouroboros forms. For Noah in particular, there aren't many great skills on Mio that would be very beneficial since it's all really based on evasion and dodging, so I just do the two general standard attack boosts of 20% and 25% because that's going to give you the maximum amount of benefit and allow Noah's Ouroboros to hit as hard as possible. For Mio's Ouroboros, I have linked Opportunity in Crisis and Satisfying Piercer because this gives a lot of benefit to your damage based on interlink level and based on if you get critical hits, and Mio has a pretty high critical hit rate as well. For Uni's Ouroboros, I have linked just general attack boosts. This is because Uni actually gets a lot of benefit out of attack, even though you might think hers is more healer focused, simply because there is one really, really powerful skill called Shared Blessing that gives you a large increase to your damage, up to 500% for each buff active on all allies. Now, if you know anything about this game, you know buffs are really powerful and the Signifer class is one of the best. So you can very, very often have plenty of buffs on all of your allies and get the maximum benefit out of this skill. And Uni's Ouroboros can be one of the hardest hitting Ouroboroses in the entire game because of that. Tyon's Ouroboros obviously has the skill linked for the same reason, because that 500% damage boost is really valuable, and also a 20% attack boost as well. Tyon actually has a similar skill related to debuffs, and his Ouroboros form allows you to apply debuffs actually a lot easier than any other option in the game because debuffs aren't really that great. So Tyon's Ouroboros can actually be probably the hardest hitting Ouroboros in the entire game in a lot of situations. For Lanza's Ouroboros links, I have Extreme Pursuit. This gives a small increase to your damage dealt when you attack enemies during combos. Now Lanza's Talon Art and Ouroboros form will automatically apply the launch combo, so I think this can be extremely valuable to get a lot of extra damage out of that. And similarly, I have Explosive Spirit, which boosts your own damage by 30% every time you execute a combo. I think this is a really valuable skill to make him do as much damage as possible, because combos can be a big part of his kit. Senna, I just have General Attack Boost Link, because I don't really need any of Lanza's skills, since they're kind of focused on block rate and such. You might be wondering, why does Ouroboros need block rate if you're not taking any damage anyway? Well, it still has an effect on the heat gauge itself, and will make you overheat faster. For similar reasons, Mio has a lot of agility-focused abilities to try to dodge attacks while in Ouroboros form to keep it up longer. I don't really think this is all that impactful, though, because you can usually just combo enemies to keep them from attacking, I think that's going to be more beneficial, which is why I just have attack boost on Senna to make her have over 2,500 attack, because that's just really funny. For art setup, I have what I consider to be probably the best arts on all of the characters. Now, unironically, it's usually just optimal to alternate back and forth between your two best arts, and the third art can be used as kind of a situational tool in some situations to give you more utility. One thing to consider when looking at your strongest arts is don't just consider the power multiplier, also look at the effects, and also look at the speed of the art itself. For example, Unison Strike is technically your most powerful art with Noah's Ouroboros. It has a 495% power multiplier, which is really high, and grants a high critical hit rate. However, the art takes like 10 seconds and will waste a lot of your Ouroboros time, and I think it's going to be much better to just spam Phantom Slash, which is a really fast art that has a pretty decent power multiplier and can also even break the enemy and has a pretty high chance at that. And Glorious Wing, which grants the entire party power charge, along with boosting the power of your buff effects yourself by 50%, allowing your next art while in Ouroboros form, or just in general, to do a lot of extra damage. And it also affects all of your allies as well. This also works on your Talon Art, which is Mega Spinning Edge, which is a really, really powerful Talon Art on the Noah kit, which I think is going to be one of your best bets to spam as much as you possibly can in most fights. As such, I usually go back and forth between these two arts and only use the Smash Art if the enemy is launched. Explaining these arts in too much detail will take a lot of time, so I'm just going to show my general setup for each of these, and you can decide if you think it works best. Radiant Wing, Dual Fang, and Jaguar Slash is on Mio's Ouroboros. I think these are probably going to be your best arts and have a lot of useful effects to them, especially Dual Fang extending duration of driver combos, or combos I should say in this game. I have Lightning Arrow on Mio as a really powerful unblockable attack. Typhoon Field is an AoE heal, which can be very beneficial to heal your allies if they're in a bad situation and not in Ouroboros forms. And Aether Collider is just a daze on all enemies. Tyon has Spirit Raven because it'll heal allies if it hits. Body Double is a really powerful art that'll also apply a debuff when hit. 
And now, Autonomize is a really powerful art as well. It can apply the Blaze debuff to an enemy, and it will also allow you to evade attacks while the art is active, and it's also a really fast art, making it a really good art to spam and use. Eightfold Divide is a bit slow, so save it for the end of the Ouroboros Link form so you're not wasting a bunch of time when you could just be doing more damage with your other arts. For Lons, I am running Ray of Punishment, a nice AoE attack, Sudden Impact for a topple, and Volcano Cannon for a launch. So if Noah gets a break in his Ouroboros form, Lons is able to topple and launch without using his Talon Art. Now the Talon Art itself will just do break, topple, and launch back to back. The Ouroboros forms seem to have a higher rate of getting reactions outside of Ogre, because Ogre has that really funny skill. So this gives you some reliable combo reactions to consider while you are in Ouroboros forms. On Senna, I have Hellbound, Earth Crusher, and Dino Upper. Hellbound and Dino Upper both will apply the blowdown effect and can be useful to stack up her additive as you can continuously get the blowdowns. Uh, they are also really fast arts and worth using in a lot of situations. Hammer Revolution is also pretty fast and also worth using because it ignores defense and can be really powerful. So there's one last thing I briefly want to discuss before showing off the Ouroboros forms in combat and how to properly use them to take the most advantage of them, and that is an accessory called Bond Crystal. This speeds up your interlink level buildup by 60%. That means every time you use a fusion art, you get 60% more effectiveness out of it in charging your Ouroboros link level. You can equip this to everyone. This can allow you to do some really interesting party setups that focus on recharge speed of arts to use as many fusions as possible, and take advantage of your Ouroboros forms rather than worrying about the specific classes that your characters are in, and just do all the damage you can with that since they are completely separate than all of your accessories, gems, and arts otherwise. For example, my current party has no defenders in it, and I am running Fraternal Badge on a lot of characters, along with the skill Protector's Pride that also boosts recharge speed by 50%. This is really funny because I can build up my interlink levels really, really quickly and just focus on using the Ouroboros forms to tank for me, and also allows me to swap between the forms when one goes on cooldown and just do all of my damage in fights that way, and it can work particularly well even against the strongest enemies in the game, which I find to be extremely hilarious. For practical purposes, I definitely want to show this off because this means you don't really have to worry that much about your class and you can still do the post game just fine by just focusing on your Ouroboros forms and specific setups for that if you want to. And on that note, let's take a look at how to use Ouroboros forms practically in combat against some of the strongest enemies. Oh, and also the legendary bond crystal drops from this enemy if you wanted to know. So how I like to do this strategy is kind of alternate my Ouroboros forms out as long as I have it set on manual interlink for all of my AI as well so they don't just randomly activate on their own. It might be a good idea to just get the fastest cooldowns possible on your Master Arts if you really want to take advantage of that, but I find it's just beneficial if you're teaming up with someone, just let them take aggro and then immediately revive them and play the healer and then you automatically have your fusion arts up to just start going ham with it. One thing to note is fusion arts don't seem to charge up if your partner is dead, so do keep that in mind. You can see right now, though, the Bond Crystal is really powerful. I'm literally already at Interlink level 2, and it hasn't even been that much time yet at all. And it should only take one or two more Fusion Arts to get to level 3. And once I'm at level 3, I should be able to have a lot of fun here. So I'm at level 3, I'm going to go ahead and activate Noah's Ouroboros, because it's a lot more powerful. And now I should hopefully be able to take aggro off of my no-tank setup party right now. We're also getting some combos in, and um, I'm going to use Mega Spinning Edge as soon as possible, because it's a really powerful art. And it can be really beneficial to do that. Using Glorious Wing before it will apply the effect to that, which can be really nice. This enemy in particular also has really high defense, and you pierce defense with this um, Mega Spinning Edge and just the abilities this kit has a lot, pretty often, which I think is really beneficial. I go ahead and use Mega Spinning Edge again. It can be really beneficial to wait towards the end of the Interlink Timer and using these because you get more power the more later in the Interlink Timer you are with Noah's Ouroboros. That's one of the effects. With Tyon, I'm just going to spam Body Double and... Uh, atomize as much as I can. I think I said atomize earlier, which is not correct. And unfortunately, even with the 50% reduction to debuffs with this, it's still a little bit difficult to apply them, but I do finally get some debuffs on there, which will make my damage hit even harder. I've got a bunch of buffs on everyone, so I'm getting that 500% easily at the very least. And atomize is really fast. It does a lot of damage really quickly. And now I'm going to, now I'm close to overheating. I'm going to use eightfold divide. And then that's pretty simple there. Now I can just immediately go into Senna now. Senna's Ouroboros, I should say. So you can kind of see just how funny this is. You can kind of just um, swap between the Ouroboros forms. They're all like level 3 and then just kind of go ham individually with each form. Which is one of the funny benefits of doing this, I think. And this is a level 130 super boss, so this is uh, something that can easily be accomplished against most enemies. Now, you may be wondering, does this work on hard mode since I'm on normal mode right now, and hard mode nerfs, nerfs interlink some? 
by making the interlink raise a little bit slower and making you overheat a little bit faster. Fortunately, with this setup, with all the bond crystals, it still raises pretty decently fast, even on hard mode, so it's not really a big deal. But you can see right here, just on normal mode, it's like really powerful, since you're basically immune to all damage when you do the setup, and you can pretty easily take aggro with your Ouroboros forms to make it not really a big deal that you don't technically have any tanks in the party, as long as you can just kind of survive the initial wave while you're charging up your setup here. So here is the funny dragon on hard mode. I just wanted to show off the Ouroboros setup here as well. Interestingly enough, this one's actually a bit of an annoying fight because he likes to use the the ability to make himself invincible pretty often against the Ouroboros forms if you apply debuffs and such, so that's kind of annoying because it's a way he clears his own debuffs, but at the same time, it's still not too bad. Like I said, this does charge up a little bit slower. I just now reached level 2, but hopefully I'll be able to reach level 3 really quickly here. I'll probably need one or two more cancels. Hopefully AI yeah, Noah is working on this at the same time. You can set your party to focus on fusion combos to make sure you get level the interlinks pretty fast on all of your characters, so that's something you can definitely be doing. And now that we're here, we're in a pretty good spot. This enemy really likes moving around and being annoying, but at the same time, it's still not a bad fight. It's still pretty easy, especially once you get to this point. And you can see right there, you can get, you can get pretty easy breaks, regardless. Even though this is a uh, hard mode. Now, you do see the heat gauge is raising way faster. We're already almost out at this point. And he also invincible that last attack there, unfortunately. But I can go straight into Tyon Zoroboros now. The invincibles wore off. And we should be able to do a decent amount of damage here. Same kind of spamming bottled up body double and atomize. You can use Spirit Raven to heal your allies if they are low on health. But no one is low on health right now, so that doesn't really matter. I have taken aggro at this point, so we should be good to go. I think it's a really funny setup, honestly. It's it's really interesting to take advantage of. You don't really have to worry about your class setup with something like this. You can just kind of make sure you're getting your fusions up fast, and you can still have plenty of success by doing combat this way. I think the best way to approach combat, though, is a mix of setting up your classes to be really powerful, a mix of having strong but or Boris setups, and just knowing how to take advantage of chain attacks when possible as well. There's really a lot of ways you can approach combat. That's probably just better for a casual standpoint. If you're probably going for like speed kills and such, you probably want to stick to ground combat and go for some specific setups to get your chain attack up faster, or really just one-shot enemies if you're lucky enough with certain setups, because that can be possible with smashing, because smashing is really broken in this game. And as soon as those go on cooldown, I can go immediately back into my level 3 Noah and Mio, and it's just kind of a cycle from here. Get another break. Now, ideally, I think you want to save your talent art on hard mode for the very end, since you can't really afford to fit in two most of the time. I'm going to try it here, though, because I'm just that risky. So, fortunately, he's not out of my effective range yet. That's usually half the problem. So, Origin Blade is up, but, of course, I don't get it in time. Unfortunate, but that is what it is. Yeah, ideally, you probably just want to save your talent art for the very end on hard mode, because you're probably not going to get two talent art out. Talent arts out because of how fast the, the the gauge goes compared to normal mode. At the same time, though, you can still easily have like 100% uptime on using an Ouroboros form, like I'm doing right now. So it's not really a big deal. I really don't like this invincibility effect, though. That's really annoying. But at the same time, I chose to fight this thing and show it off on hard mode. So just something you got to deal with. Sometimes it doesn't really matter that much. Sometimes you're it, you're still doing plenty of damage here. I'm able to get the talent art off before the overheat, which is really nice. I'm currently checking the interlink levels in Senna, and Lons are not quite there yet, so I'm going to go ahead and swap to Senna and get level 3 up myself, and then activate. I like using Senna over Lons, because Senna just does a lot of damage. Makes good sense to me there. Senna should be invincible to this flame attack that's targeting her. Unfortunately, Tyan gets one shot, but we've got like, a bunch of healers in the setup, so Mia should be able to revive pretty easily. And at this point, we can basically just kind of stall at this point and finish the fight pretty easily no matter what so we're really in no danger here i think i just go and head and chain attack after this and the fight's basically over from there i'm not going to show all that off though all in all though ouroboros forms can definitely be really fun to use they can do a lot of damage and you can get a lot of benefit out of taking advantage of that and using them properly i think that's probably going to cover it for the general gist of the guide it's really, really easy to take advantage of this kind of setup if you know what you're doing, and it's really, really fun too, because it's a different kind of playstyle than focusing on your class setup and all of the setup options there. This is really easy to set up as long as you have the SP to do it. And if you are earlier on in the game, you can still kind of do something like this and not have too many issues. 
Especially if you have all three fusion arts, that makes your Ouroboros interlink levels charge up pretty dang fast. And there are weaker versions of the Bond Crystal that I have that you can set to make your interlinks charge faster. I think there's pretty good accessories to take advantage of if you really just want to spam interlinks as much as possible. But you are a bit limited by the overheat gauge, so do keep that in mind. And in some situations, you may not even have to worry about the overheat gauge that much as long as your AI is doing fusions properly. So that is something that can be helpful as well. You might not even need the accessory if you're trying to do a super proper team setup. I just think this is really funny to take advantage of. Regardless, though, as I think I said, that's probably going to cover it for me, so I hope you guys learned something from watching this guide. And if you did, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below, and tell me what you want to see next. I will probably be doing a lot more class guides in the future, and I have a couple other things planned as well. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and I will see you soon.